Okay, so let's quickly go through this here, guys. Growth of a plant towards light is what? Phototropism. Okay, one mark for that. Sugar is transported in the phloem. Yes, Quasi. No. Uh, number three, to carry out any tropism, plants must make cells on one side of the stem longer than the other. The main hormone responsible for that is auxins. Okay, and I even uh, drew it on there actually that day on the diagram. Okay. Okay, often plant cells need to replace older damaged cells. Which hormone would help them do that? Cytokinins, the ones that cause them to divide. Okay, number five, a vine is climbing up a fence using small tendrils. This is an example of thigmotropism. Okay, number six, in late September, deciduous trees uh, lose their leaves and they secrete what in order to signal that? Abscisic acids. And I never spell that right. Okay, uh, what's the gas that's vital to ripening a fruit? Ethylene. Alright, eight and nine are the ones that usually give people trouble on this quiz. The layer of the leaf where water is lost, and most importantly, gases are exchanged. That is, oxygen for carbon dioxide. Which layer is that? the spongy layer. Okay, That's why it's full of so many holes. Okay, All of that stuff has to go on in there. So that is the spongy layer. Because right? remember, right above it is the palisade layer where photosynthesis occurs. So the exchange of gases has to happen right below that. Number nine, what structure on the leaf this time controls the loss of water and exchange of gases? Stomata. You know, if, if you had stomates, I will also accept that. Okay. Guard cells, I'll take that too. Okay. And number 10, what are the two main functions of the stem? Support. Okay, I'd accept transport. Okay, support and transport. Since that's where the phloem and xylem are, that would mean that the stem's main job is also support, or sorry, also transport. So support and transport, one mark each for those. It's out of 11. Okay, please give them a mark. Yeah, because there's two marks for number, two marks for number 10. Okay, so give them a mark out of 11. Let them see it. Put it in the box. All right, so we'll go through this as quickly as possible so we can get down to the computer lab and you'll have as much time as possible to work on this. Okay, I'll be working on this today and tomorrow. Uh, this is your research project for the bio unit. Now, it is relatively straightforward. It's strictly a report about a plant species of your choice. All right. Um, you, there are some things that you'll need to tell me about it for sure, which we'll go through in a minute. But first, a warning. And it, whenever you have strictly a report, it's very easy to fall into the trap of plagiarism. And this is the project I see it the most often on. All right. Know that it is very easy for me to tell All right. if something has been plagiarized or not. And if I have any suspicion whatsoever, I check. Okay, so um, let's please avoid doing that. Make sure you process everything in your mind and then write it in your own words, preferably different than the ones you read. Yes? Um, yeah, really in this one there shouldn't be much need for that, but yeah. And, and quotes shouldn't, shouldn't be like whole paragraphs, because I know sometimes people do that. Well, Mr. Goderi, put in quotations. <laughs> yeah, then don't count it towards your word count. Okay, they weren't yours. All right. Um, so in this project, you need to examine growth patterns and most importantly, adaptations of a plant of your choice. That should include a description of the plant's native environments and the conditions that that plant faces or has to deal with in that environment. So is it you know, uh, often flooded, excessively dry, brutally cold, okay, or whatever it has to deal with? Are there lots of predators, herbivores, okay, out there all right, that, uh, that will eat it okay, and things like that? 
All right, so uh, that will uh, then lead to a description of how your plant grows, adapts, and deals with the conditions in which it lives. All right, so that's the really, the really important part. Okay, is here's the the environment it lives in. Here's what it has to do to survive there. Okay, and you have to do that in the context of the things we've talked about: tropisms, transport of water and nutrients, um, you know, conserving water, all of that kind of stuff. Everybody with me there? Hormones, okay, that we talked about in class, all of that. Okay, so look at tropisms it employs, how it distributes its roots, fibrous or tap roots, okay, uh, leaves, stem, okay, and how uh, it competes with other plants in its environment, all right? One of the examples we've talked about is that uh, the needles of uh, pine trees are often very acidic and that kills anything underneath them, all right? That's a way to compete with other plants in your environment. Um, if your plant has any special adaptations that prevent it from being eaten, damaged, or just plain survive, these should be described as well. There are several plants that are adapted to survive being burnt. Okay, like they can actually have all of their leaves burnt off and most of their outer bark charred, but they will grow back. All right, so there's there's lots of plants to choose from with really unique adaptations to their environment. Okay, other things that uh, you might want to consider in terms of adaptation to the environment are anything that they might do that's special to help get them pollinated or to move their seeds. Okay, uh, we talked about how the poplar tree seeds are transported on those little wind-borne pieces of fuzz, all right? But there's lots of different ways for plants to get their seeds moved or their pollen moved or receive pollen, okay? Things like that, like, you know, some plants will uh, make nectar and that will entice, you know, uh, birds and insects to come to their flowers, bringing pollen from other flowers, etc. Okay, um, so in your project you need to report on the structure of your plant. Is it a flowering plant? Is it a conifer? Conifer means it has cones, all right, so it's like a spruce or a pine or something like that. Okay, uh, is it a moss, etc.? Okay, what are its specific needs in terms of light, water, soil, and nutrients? So, if, you know, if it's a, a plant that grows in our area, obviously it has to be uh, able to deal with long days, okay, as well as short ones, all right, uh, whereas a tropical rainforest plant always gets the same amount of sun, okay, things to think about. Um, what are its needs in terms of soil, nutrients, etc.? Can it grow in really rocky soil? Does it need just absolutely perfect soil? Okay, things like that. Uh, describe the conditions your plant survives. We already talked about that, how it does that. Use your knowledge of plant structure, growth, and development to illustrate how your plant species is unique and how it is adaptive. So how many times have we seen the word adapt in here? Okay, adaptations, adapt, adaptive. Okay, adaptations again, see it here. Okay, really, really important because that's kind of the bulk, th that's what that's what separates your plant from the others is how it's adapted. All right, in terms of growth, development, and life cycle, be specific, okay? Talk about, you know, maybe how long it takes for this thing to be considered mature or how long it takes for it to germinate or its seeds only released under certain conditions. Does it only flower every other year or every 10 years or in some cases of really weird ones like every 100 and some years, all right? Uh, something like that. So uh, describe how the plant's seeded, how it initially develops, and what conditions may be necessary for it to occur, how it grows as a sapling or sprout, and at what age, when you said it would be considered mature, Describe whether your plant is an annual. If it's an annual, how, how long does it grow for? One year. Okay, one year is an annual. Perennial means it comes back every year. Is it evergreen, deciduous? Okay, uh, and how this affects its growth and development. For the environmental influences, describe how the conditions in the plant's environment can affect its tissues. Are there parasites, uh, parasitic organisms, fungi, or insects, or whatever that attempt to infect this species? How does it resist those? Uh, is fire, flooding, drought, freezing a concern? And how is your plant species adapted to survive or reproduce after events like that? Okay, visual aids. This one's got to have pictures. Okay, I don't want to read about this plant and never see a picture of it. I don't have a very good imagination. I'll think it's just something green with leaves. Which it is in truth, but then, you know, I don't know for sure what it looks like. So, lots of pictures will be good. Remember how you insert those, okay, in either Google Docs or Word. Just hit insert and in Word it says picture and in Google Docs it says image. Okay, but it's the same process in either one. Just put it in there, okay, and you can you can make the text wrap around it. Okay, if you right click on it in Word, you can select how you want the text to wrap. So it doesn't just have this picture and then all your words are kind of down below it or whatever. You can actually make them wrap around. Um, yeah, and then citing references. Remember that uh, the last time we did one of these, this was kind of the area where people uh, lost some marks. Okay, this here is how you cite a book, and this 
is how you cite a website. All right. This would include your pictures. All right. When you're using pictures, you should give credit to the person who took the picture. All right. Now, most of the time, that will be the same person. If you get the picture off of the off of one of the websites that you're reading, you're golden. Okay. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Okay. On something like that. Except that Google Images is just a search engine. That doesn't tell me who took the picture and give that person proper credit. It gives Google credit for being a good search engine and finding them. Okay, I know I was being forgiving. Okay, you do need to give the person. Okay, who took the? You have to find who that is. I mean, you can't find it, then you say photographer unknown. Okay, and and you write down whatever other information about the website that picture was on. Okay, because when you do when you open it up in Google Images, right, it it gives you the big black kind of rectangle across the middle with just that picture in it and you can click on go to this website right where that picture is located and then you can find the information there All right, so please make sure that uh, you do that as well okay so author's name or photographer's name okay date it was posted name of the uh, website name of the sorry name of the article name of the website okay the URL and the date you accessed it okay um, well October 31st 2013 okay um, don't write Halloween. Okay, right, give me an actual date. Okay, um, yeah. So make sure that you do that because obviously that's pretty important. Okay, uh, for um, for marks, make sure you have planning as well. Okay, a lot of people forgot that the last time. Okay, so I want uh, for planning, uh, like a thought web, an outline, and a timeline. Okay, when you're going to work on stuff. Okay, when you're going to uh, do whatever. Okay, when you're going to have me review it, all of that kind of stuff. Thought web just needs to include your major ideas. Outline is just you know paragraph one talk about this, paragraph two talk about this. Okay, it doesn't need to be really really you know detailed. Okay, just show me that you thought about it before you put it together. And if you didn't and you put it together and you're doing it after, well, do a good job of trying to fool me. Okay, but have some planning either way. It is going to be due November 14th, so you're getting just over two weeks to get her done. Okay. All right, so yeah, the five areas you're getting marked in initiating and planning, analysis and interpretation, communication, research and investigation, and then overall quality of the, uh, of the report when it's handed in. Questions on that, guys? All right, we are headed to the St. Tarsicius Computer Lab. That is the one that is closest to the gym. Okay.